Israeli communities on all fronts. Thanks to forceful IDF action, the rate of rocket fire has dwindled dramatically since the start of the war. The IDF continues to focus its efforts in Khan Yunis, conducting targeted raids to dismantle terror tunnel shafts and enemy infrastructure. It is doing so while operating against terror holdouts in the northern and central strip, including against terrorists hiding in a school and exploiting other civilian infrastructure in flagrant violation of international humanitarian law. An update on UNRWA. Following recent damning revelations, including the evidence laid before the U.S. House Foreign Affairs Committee, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has called for other U.N. agencies to replace UNRWA, which has been totally infiltrated by Hamas, he said, and acts in its service. Meeting U.N. ambassadors yesterday, the Prime Minister called for the U.N. to understand that UNRWA's mission must end. Israel wants to see humanitarian aid reach civilians in Gaza who need it, while making sure that Hamas cannot steal it. The Prime Minister therefore underscored the need for an objective and constructive body to deliver aid to civilians in Gaza. We totally reject statements from UN officials that there is no alternative to this Hamas front. This is simply poppycock. The fact is, UNRWA is doing a terrible job at distributing aid. Its leaders are covering up their failure and their cover-up of Hamas by scapegoating Israel. Our neighbours in Gaza deserve aid agencies that will serve them and not themselves or Hamas. The UN already has aid agencies with expertise in emergency relief in conflict zones. To date, however, they have been prevented from operating in Gaza because of UNRWA's monopoly. These viable alternatives must be developed now so that aid can be distributed effectively and professionally instead of being routed through an agency that is not only compromised by terrorists but failing to do its job. We repeat, there is excess capacity at Israel's crossings for aid to enter Gaza. The problem rests with the Hamas front that the world community has foolishly and scandalously trusted to deliver aid to civilians. We think it's frankly deplorable that international actors are closing ranks to protect this failed agency instead of working to develop viable, effective and proven alternatives. Donors wishing to help civilians in Gaza must reroute aid funds earmarked for UNRWA to agencies that do not employ, collude with or cover up for terrorists. Those alternatives exist and it is way past time to use them. Meanwhile, Israel also calls for an independent, in-depth and transparent investigation into UNRWA's conduct in the Gaza Strip over the years. We're confident that the results of that investigation will shock global taxpayers with revelations of how their money has financed, fueled, and covered up for terrorism for decades. The UN and its leadership have simply been ignoring evidence for decades, responding instead by smearing and defaming the independent watchdogs that have been sounding the alarm. Under no circumstances may donors settle for any sort of internal UN review of its own activities in light of this decades-long cover-up. An update now on the October 7 hostage crisis. Yesterday, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu announced we are working to achieve another framework for a hostage release and explained his red lines, including no end to the war, no withdrawal of the IDF from the Gaza Strip and no release of thousands of terrorists. The Prime Minister clarified Israel remains committed to achieving all three of its war aims, which are non-negotiable and which we intend to achieve simultaneously. Destroying Hamas releasing the hostages and making sure that Gaza can never again pose a threat to the people of Israel. Also yesterday, Prime Minister Netanyahu met with representatives of the hostages' families at the Prime Minister's office in Jerusalem. He assured them that the government is making every effort to secure the release of all the hostages, noting that the more discreet those efforts, the greater their chances of success. An important reminder about the numbers. 253 people were abducted on October 7th, 253, not approximately 240, 253. Of those, 132 remain trapped in Hamas captivity, joining four more hostages from before the war. Of those 132 hostages, we know that at least 29 are dead, 28 murdered in Hamas captivity, and one killed in an unsuccessful rescue attempt. In total, Hamas has murdered at least 36 hostages.
That figure was revised after the Israel police recently announced that Sergeant First Class Ran Gvili was in fact killed in the October 7 massacre, with his body then abducted into Gaza and Hamas now holding it for ransom. Time is running out for the 104 hostages we must presume to still be alive, and those from before October 7, those hostages we fear Hamas is starving and torturing and raping and executing in its terror dungeons. We repeat our demand for the immediate and unconditional release of the hostages, as the International Court of Justice has called for, and for unimpeded access for the Red Cross until they are all safely back home. That's the end of today's update. We'll now take your questions as always. Thank you. First question comes from Dan Williams. In exchange for normalization, Saudi Arabia wants at least a nominal commitment from Israel to the creation of a Palestinian state. Is Israel prepared to make such a commitment? Dan, I'll refer you to remarks the Prime Minister made a few days ago in which he explained his opposition to the notion of a Palestinian state and explained the importance of Israel's security control west of the Jordan River. Uh, anything short of total Israeli security control west of the Jordan River would risk a repeat October 7 massacre on a much larger scale. We're talking about territory 20 times the size of the Gaza Strip overlooking Tel Aviv, surrounding Jerusalem, populated by people, 0% of whom, according to a recent Doha Institute poll, believe that the October 7 massacre was illegitimate. That is the Prime Minister's stated position. Next question comes from Jim Williams of Zenga International. The Prime Minister told a UN envoy that UNRWA must be replaced. At the same time, some of the UN agencies are asking the US and other countries to resume funding. Is this putting a strain on Israel to help getting aid to the right people in Gaza? We believe that UNRWA is not a viable mechanism for aid delivery in the Gaza Strip. It is a Hamas front. It employs terrorists that allows them to operate out of its facilities and it launders their talking points for global consumption. The fact is, it is simply doing a bad job distributing aid. It's calling for more entry points into the Gaza Strip while asking us to keep Kerem Shalom closed on Saturday because we are facilitating more aid than they are able to distribute. As I said in the briefing today, the UN has other aid agencies. They exist. They operate all over the world in other conflict zones. They have the manpower. They have the expertise. And it is time to put them in action in the Gaza Strip. There are people there who, as we are consistently reminded by the international community, need international aid. And it is important that they achieve it through professional agencies and not through the Hamas front that is UNRWA. Hannah Julian of the Jewish Press asks, there are reports that the State Department is considering recognition of a Palestinian state or at least encouraging others in the international community to do so and also mulling abstention on a vote to admit Palestine as a full member state of the United Nations. How does Israel pr plan to respond to such actions? Uh, not familiar with uh, any specific information on that. Israel's position has been very clear about what is necessary for our security, especially in the wake of the October 7 massacre. We thank the Biden administration for its stalwart and steadfast support since the beginning of the October 7 massacre, since the beginning of the administration, leading with moral, material and uh, diplomatic support. Um, and uh, we're confident that that will continue and the United States and Israel will continue operating side by side as uh, an unbreakable bond of stalwart allies. The next question comes from Joel Pollack of Breitbart News. Politico reports that the hostage families are being advised by consultants who are paid by Qatar. Is Israel concerned that Qatar is not just a mediator but is also intervening to help Hamas? Um, as the Prime Minister has said before on previous occasions, uh, Qatar has leverage over Hamas's leaders. It hosts Hamas's leaders on its soil. We are working with Qatar in its capacity as a mediator in light of that leverage, and we are fully aware of all the incumbent complexities in that arrangement. The next question comes from Lior Soroka of the Washington Post. An Adolu agency reported today that the IDF fully withdraws from northern and western areas of North Gaza. Can you relate to that? Uh, the IDF announced recently that it had succeeded in completely dismantling Hamas's terror infrastructure in the northern Gaza Strip and dismantling Hamas's weapons production capability in the central Gaza Strip. Uh, we therefore shifted to a new stage of the fighting. Our forces, however, continue to target pockets of resistance and Hamas and Islamic Jihad fighters inside the Gaza Strip, uh, the northern areas, including a group of Islamic Jihad fighters um, who were operating out of a school, and I'll refer 
refer you to the statements coming out from the IDF uh, on its Telegram channels with ongoing updates about uh, operational movements in the Gaza Strip. Okay, that's all we have time for today. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, have a good weekend and keep safe. Thank you very much. And that was Israeli government spokesperson Elon Levy holding his daily Israel government update there on day 118 of the Israel-Hamas war.